Well, I hope everyone's doing well. I'm surprised that it's uh, taking me this long to look at the next video we're going to be looking at. Clueless American's Guide to the Champions League. Now, I get a chance, whenever I get the chance, I, I do watch, especially if I can catch Liverpool games. But I, there's been quite a few times this past even college football season where, especially in the early part of the day, where there'd be a Premier League game on. And I would watch that instead of whatever college football game was on, which is just not the norm for me whatsoever. Uh, I'm a huge college football fan, but yeah, things just, I don't know, things things just haven't set well with me in the last couple of years with some of the changes, but that's just me. That being said, let's look at the Clues Americans Guide to the Champions League. Now, I, I, I know that there's a lot of there's a lot of different teams within the Champions League, and they're within different leagues, but they play within... Yeah, let's let's just get into it, shall we? Well, hello, my fellow American. I see that you cannot afford to drive anywhere anytime soon, so here we are. Three years now, and we're still stuck inside. So I know you need a little bit more distractions in your life. So apparently this was made during the, uh, during the pandemic. Three years now, and we're still stuck inside. So I know you need a little bit more distractions in your life. And what if I told you that for less than a single gallon of gasolina, you could be watching a sports product just as good as the NFL playoffs. Oh. I'm going to say this. Uh, the last couple years, probably about the last five, six years, the only reason why I followed the NFL whatsoever, past just what the Colts are doing, which are my favorite team, the only reason why I take and follow the NFL is fantasy football. Um, not only leagues, but also daily fantasy side, uh, you know, FanDuel and DraftKings and stuff like that. It's not a lot. I might take and put $10 in <laughs> about every five, six weeks. But, yeah, that's that's the only reason why I've capped up. See what see what stats people are getting and how many points I've got on my, you know, how my, my, my fantasy team has done and how my daily fantasy team that I've, you know, put together the night before have done. So, yeah, it's... The Premier League is more exciting. Most games are more exciting. And there's a lot more tension just on the edge of your seat type stuff more frequently from what I've, when I would watch than NFL games. So, I mean, because a team that's three and six, they're not going to the playoffs. So there's no drama there. You, you know they're probably going to lose the game against a team that's even got a 500 record so yeah i can imagine the champions league is probably even more exciting and it's going on right now yes you've seen the title i'm talking about the uefa champions league aka the european version of playoffs now as an american i know you guys all hate european soccer because they don't have a playoff system and us as americans we're more civilized than they are we love a good playoff series and yes you're cultured you've heard of the big teams like barcelona bayern munich ac milan but they all play in different countries with different leagues that's too confusing for you you're not gonna watch all of that but what if i told you we just took my question is how did they decide who's who's do all the teams from those leagues play it within the champions league or it's just certain ones or is it you win yeah, let's just watch because that's the one confusing part for me. Because I know there's a lot of different team, you know, leagues that are wrapped up within it. But like, once you determine a champion and stuff like that, you know, for the you know, like who's. Anyways, yeah, let's let's play. All of those best teams, the best teams that you've heard of, and we put them in a World Cup style tournament arc. Oh, and this happens every year. That's what the Champions League is, and it's just as epic as the NFL playoffs. Or the NBA playoffs. The top leagues from every country in UEFA send their best teams from the previous season into this World Cup style tournament that runs parallel oh. to the regular season. And exactly like the World Cup, they do round robin play to go ahead and eliminate the scrubs. And then, depending on the records, they go ahead and put them into a standard playoff bracket. And from that point on, it's two leg series until the finals. That means you play one game at home and one away. Now, in the past, there was this confusing rule about away goals counting more in the event of a, a two leg tie. But luckily for you, my fellow, Hello, dumb American. You don't have to learn any of that shit now because they changed the rule for the first time in 50 years. So from this season, yeah, that would be away goals count more. That so you'd be, you. It sounds like you wouldn't be penalized as much for losing maybe 
at home. Well, no, because the other team would take and score. See, that's just what? Season on, it's exactly like the World Cup knockout stages. If they're tied after two games, you play two extra 15 minute halves. And if it's still tied after that, you go to a penalty shootout. And come on, what red blooded American doesn't like a good old fashioned shootout in more ways than one? Now you're a smart American. I assume that you know how the World Cup works by this point. So for this video, I'm just gonna be your guide, your Sherpa, if you will, give you the spark notes rundown of all the big teams that are still competing, the storylines that are going on right now. And hopefully by the end of this video, you'll be primed and ready to experience the European version of playoff football. Welcome to a clueless guide to the Champions League. All right, so first off, disclaimer. This video is going to feature a lot less Champions League footage than you might expect from me, and that's because the Champions League and UEFA are f***ing Nazis when it comes to copyright claims. <laughs> yes, they are. Bl claims, to heck with the claims, they block crap like just like that. <laughs> yeah, I can't even... Even compilation stuff. It's like, bruh, there's like five seconds of that goal being scored and you blocked it off of that show they're commercial they're commercial or even like a fifa render of the logo let's say copyright claim this video hey assholes i'm doing your marketing for you the least you could do is let youtube pay me by the way on an unrelated note please donate to me on patreon link up in the i thing is thank you but anywho as per usual there is a clear and easy team for most americans to root for in this competition that of course is Chelsea Football Club because they got the best American in the game, baby. And that's Christian Pulisic. Not Pulisic, he's Pulisic because he's American. And this little guy from Hershey, Pennsylvania has been killing it as of late for club. Are we hearing some bias here? Maybe just a just a teeny weensy little bit? I mean, it's the way it kind of sounds. And country, scoring crucial goals to help both Chelsea and the U.S. men's national team advance in their respective competitions. Now, for my uninitiated Americans who have never actually watched Pulisic play, this guy is uber talented, but streaky, all right? And while he's young, I, I think it's fair to say that he's a little bit injury prone. So like the, the normal American athlete that plays in the NFL or Major League Baseball, streaky? Yeah, not a surprise whatsoever on that. But, but when this motherfucker is fit and dialed in, he is a little monster. Think of him like the Dalvin Cook of European football. You know he's gonna miss a couple of games every year, but when he's in there, he's Yo, a fucking beast. That's and also the other up. reason why you should probably be for Chelsea is they're the defending champions. For those that don't know, Dalvin Cook is a running back, and he's highly talented. Now he's, I, I think he's a free agent within the league, or no, he was signed to the Ravens. But anyways, that neither being here here nor there, um, yeah, he he'd have. A run of really good games and then he'd be injured and be out or he'd have a, a run of oh he, he took a rush for 40 yards and no touchdowns and three catches for 10 yards and he'd have a run like that of like two or three games and he'd have a run of three or four games with 100 125 150 rushing yards with a touchdown or two each game and then he'd get injured so it's streaky yeah that's again that that if Pulis Pulisic being a American athlete even over in europe makes complete sense that he'd be streaky that's just that's just how it works of this tournament yeah in actuality they they weren't really one of the stronger teams last year but they got hot and that's all you need in the champions league they went on a cinderella run and won it all and this isn't even the first time they've done it they did it like six years ago there's just something about this team that makes magical runs when it comes to the champions league now there's a little bit of a of a big elephant in the room here that a lot of Americans aren't going to like. And that is simply because the owner is Russian and Russians aren't very popular right now. But I will say this. Roman Abramovich, the oligarch who owns Chelsea Football Club, has done the noble thing and, and put the team up for sale. And if reports are to be believed, I mean, who knows these days? So big asterisk here. But if the reports are true, he has become a, a sort of mediator and has had discussions with both Putin and Zelensky trying to broker a peace deal in this conflict. So as far as oligarch owners go, he's probably not even the worst one left in this competition. Like Real Madrid's owner would not gladly kick one. a Ukrainian baby in the face if it meant that he would capture another Champions League title. Let's be honest. Oh God. You know he would do it. Look at this man. <laughs> but if you don't even want to think about all this bullshit going on, I don't blame you. And frankly, there are stronger teams that you can bandwagon on. But now, all right. 
everyone, just just go ahead and sit down because uh, Daddy, Daddy's got some bad news, okay? And that is, uh, it's sad to report, but the most exciting team in this tournament is um is already knocked out. All right, let's talk about it, okay? PSG, aka Paris Saint Germain, aka the team with the sick Jordan jerseys, aka the team with Neymar, Mbappe, and Messi. Names that you actually have heard of. Um, they've already been eliminated. Messi left his lifelong club at Barcelona to join the stars over in Paris. And that has resulted in them bouncing out of the first round of the Champions League knockout stages. In fact, the two goats of the sport, Messi and Ronaldo, have both been knocked out of round. You might be asking yourself, how did a team featuring Messi, Neymar, and Mbappe actually lose? Well, quick history lesson, PSG always lose in this competition. And that's because even though PSG has bought like all the most expensive players in the world, they play in the French League. I was say they'd be like the New York Yankees, but just within the the football world, if, you know, buying best play. That's what the Yankees do in baseball. They that are now the Dodgers. Like their luxury tax, I think, is almost as much as their payroll, and their payroll is like four or five hundred million dollars. So. Uh, Okay, okay, that's putting some context on PSG because I've heard of Neymar and you know Mbappe and of course Messi. Who who hasn't heard of Messi, right? Uh, even if you don't watch football, you've probably heard of Messi and Ronaldo, to be honest with you. And at this point, probably Neymar because COD with the Neymar bundle for Warzone and Modern Warfare Two. Anyways, <clears throat> yeah, back to the video. One thing I will say, I, I love the, the fact that this is done by an American for Americans, so you get a lot of American phrasing for some things. <laughs> and Daddy's got some bad news. Like, are we all, are we playing Rust here? Like, seriously, are we, are we playing Rust or maybe some COD? It's not something you expect to hear in a video. Which is pretty much the equivalent of the G League of European football. Like, literally, if you took the Warriors and made them play G League teams, that's PSG in the French League. And I personally believe that's why they always choke in this competition. You can't play your little brother clubs week in and week out and think you're going to be prepared for when you face a team that will actually punch you back. It's just nature, you know? The Mongols, the oh, greatest wow. conquerors the world has ever seen. They would actually rotate their generals from the city life back to the desolate steppe every couple of months because what they found out and what human nature will show you is that no matter how badass you are, that comfy life will make you soft. So even though they have more money than God and they have all the big name stars, I they don't the have the sparring symbol. partners to keep the match sharp. It's stars and scrubs in the French League. And that's ultimately what's fucking them over. The wealth inequality in France is fucking up even their soccer league, which is the most French thing I've heard. But sick kits though. I mean like, they're fucking fantastic. I gotta get one if YouTube will actually pay me. Now, the best <laughs> team out of Germany. <laughs> well, if you didn't cuss every four seconds, Thanks for the editing job here, Butt White. If you didn't cuss every four seconds within your videos, you might get monetized a little bit more often. That if you didn't use so many, I don't know, copyrighted photos, probably. If I had to venture a guess, that probably get claimed. Yeah, anyways. Kinda has the same problem, but, but just not as pronounced. Now that team is called Bayern Munich, and they've been the big bullies of the Bundesliga for generations now. Now like PSG, uh, they have more money than everyone else in the league. And even if some of the rival teams can produce or develop like an actual good player here or there, they just buy them up. They rip them they off of the up. stem, okay. like ripe fruit off of their neighbor's tree. But in other offense, at least they have like a couple of half decent like teams in Germany to keep the match sharp. And they play like what you think a German team would play like. Strong, precise, efficient, well coached. An exciting war chest of attacking talent spearheaded by the best striker in the world in Robert Lewandowski. This man is kind of like the Steph Curry of Europe in that he isn't really the most like physically impressive human being, but he does everything so skillfully, so gracefully, and can score in so many different ways that, that was he has nice turned goal. himself that into was one nice. of the most dangerous weapons so the that. sport has ever seen. But even they, the Germans, are not as dominant as they have been in the past. Anytime a team in the Bundesliga hasn't just like rolled over and showed them their belly, when they actually fight back a little, you can see that this team gets a little nervy. They get a little nervous. The Premier League has been the most successful league over the past couple years in the Champions League. And that's because they play in the most competitive league in the world. The English usually have four to six very strong teams in the league. And even the mid-table teams and the lower tier teams can now afford high caliber talent 
because of the revenue sharing from the massive TV contracts they've recently signed. And what this has caused is the whole iron sharpened iron concept. There are no gimmies like in the Bundesliga or in the Spanish League or in the French League. And the proof is in the results because two of the last three years have been a Champions League final where both of the teams were represented by the Premier League. Chelsea won it last year, Liverpool won it three years ago and appeared in the finals the year before that. And Man City made their first final appearance last season. And it seems honestly only a matter of time before they eventually capture their first Champions League trophy. As for my favorite team, and the team that Cristiano Ronaldo plays for Manchester United, they uh, they have no real excuses. They spent big this summer, they got amazing talent, a new German coach, and they still can't get a dot. Bounce out of the round of 16 <laughs> by a team you've probably never heard of. And to top it off, they might not even qualify for Champions League next year. It's it's great. It's great being a Manchester United fan. In fact, if I... My God, he sounds like a Cleveland Browns or Detroit Lions fan nine years out of ten on this. Jesus <laughs> we got all this talent. We wasted it. I have one piece of advice to any new American fans. Do not become a Man United fan. They are the Dallas Cowboys of Europe. Oh, they have glory God. days in the 90s, and it's only been flirting with glory ever since. For a deep dive into why Man United suck donkey balls, uh, you can go ahead and click up <laughs> in the eye thingies and I'll link you to a video where I break that down. But it's best that you do not waste any Yo, more on these I buttons. love his phrasing so here. I eight. love his and phrasing. Of the teams left in this competition, you want to know who should I a red-blooded American bandwagon. Liverpool. Now let's go 100%. over the scrub teams, or, you know, we'll, we'll call them Cinderella teams. But as an American, I know you, all right? As TLC said, you don't want no scrubs. You want winners. You want people who want to win. So I will say for- And if you stop using copyrighted music like that, you're, you're gonna take- uh, If YouTube would pay me, stop making dumb decisions with your videos. Like these are well put together, but some of the underlying factors here. Ha <laughs> ha. All my hipsters out there, though, that there is a little bit of a dark horse in this competition, and that is Villarreal. They're from the Spanish League, and they just knocked out Juventus, who are the Real Madrid of Italy. And what I like about them is they can defend like a motherfucker, and they are tricky off of their set pieces. If they can take their chances, if this was March Madness, they could be the bracket buster of this competition. So, for all my soccer hipsters, this is the pick for you. But for most Americans, I mean, you know, Benfica is a, a legendary Portugal club, but they're probably not gonna win this. Atletico Madrid actually made the finals not too long ago, but once again, no one really cares. And if one of these Cinderella teams actually does make it into the finals, just go on Wikipedia and pretend like you actually did know about them. But for most Americans, I know you. You wanna choose one of the big boys. So first up, let's talk about Real Madrid. Now the reason you aren't gonna be able to watch the likes of Messi, Neymar, Mbappe, all the names that you actually have heard of, is because Real Madrid knocked them out in the round of 16. Now, you probably heard of Real Madrid, but this isn't the Real Madrid of your father's time or even your uncle's time. Their nickname is the Galacticos. They were like the Yankees of old. Okay, I love that nickname. Real Madrid Galacticos? What? I've heard of Real Madrid. Like, I've heard of a lot of these teams. I just... Yeah, because every so often I do take and dabble with the... um. Daily Fantasy Sports for uh, football purposes, too. That requires a deep dive into stats I know nothing about. But anyways, yeah. They just had more money than everyone, so they would just buy up all the best players. But that has kind of recently changed over the past five years. Ever since they sold Ronaldo, they've kind of bet their future on the kids. They're still dishing out insane amounts of money, but instead of all oh, wow. for established world-class superstars, they're now... Still overpaying like for slightly for less for the juking. best under 21 talent coming out of South America. Bro. They're basically trying to do what Barcelona did with Messi and Neymar. But that gamble hasn't really paid off yet. Like the kids have shown some flashes here and there, but to say that the, the next Neymar is, is quite a stretch. And the superstars that are left on the team are, yeah, they're a little bit past their prime. But when the team needed the most in the Champions League up against PSG, these aging stars who have the season experience of being in these big moments were able to dig themselves out of a 2-0 hole and storm all the way back to beat a team led by Messi, Neymar, and Mbappe. Karim Benzema, a player Real Madrid has been trying to upgrade over for the past decade now, scored a hat trick to knock out the most expensive attacking wow. trio in the world. Now, as inspirational as this is, I, I don't want to make it out to be like, oh, this is such a, a huge underdog story because they're, they're both the big spenders of their respective leagues. It's just the Paris billionaires are, are a bit more rich than the Madrid billionaires right now. 
But once again, this is why you watch the Champions League instead of their domestic leagues. So you get to see all the bullies come out and actually fight other bullies. Just kaiju battling kaiju. Godzilla King of Monster style. No filler, all steak. And it's lovely. And then there's Liverpool. And Liverpool is, is probably the easiest choice for most Americans if you're not going to root for Chelsea. They're owned by Americans, and LeBron has a part stake in the team. They have an amazing 11 that played beautiful. Attack. That's actually disappointing. He has a part stake. Uh, I say that LeBron's a very talented person and everything like that, but his ego is just god-awful. Attacking football, and their attackers create the spectacular on the regular. And their coach is somehow more likable and lovable than everything I just mentioned. The only reason not to become a fan of Liverpool at this point is that they're just a bit overplayed at the moment. Like, it's it's almost too easy of a choice. You get what I'm saying? They're like the white fans of European sports team. There's no real reason to dislike them, and, and no one's going to give you shit for repping them. But deep down inside, when you wear them, you'll feel a bit basic. And that's what it's like becoming a Liverpool fan in 2022. And if you're okay with that, then this is the team for you. And you're not going to be disappointed. They're Bro. fantastic. And then we have Manchester City. Now, these guys are the Golden State Warriors of British football. If the Warriors, when they got KD, also got LeBron and Giannis Antetokounmpo and Luka Doncic. That's how oh, much wow. talent this team that's, has hoarded uh, yeah, over the past be... decade. And much like the Good Warriors, Lord. they were a footnote in sports history until new billionaire owners came along and weaponized them into a global footballing force. But credit, where credit is due, their Citigroup teams have been topping the tables in multiple corners of the globe this year. And there are plenty of new billionaire owners who buy up teams every single season, but few have had as rapid and prolonged success as City. Five domestic. So what I'm seeing from this is I need to take a deep dive in some of these teams in general and some of these actual like leagues in general. Maybe some watch-alongs in the future. I don't know. Don't quote me on that. Domestic titles since they took over. More than any other team in that time. And as a Manchester United fan, I can freely admit they have all but overtaken us as the most dominant team in England. But the one final jewel that has eluded them in their quest for world domination has been the UEFA Champions, Champions. League trophy. Uh. For whatever reason, it is the last piece of silverware that has avoided their orbit. Now, they basically are the Yankees or the Galacticos of Britain. They have bought talent three times over. Their B team could probably beat the majority of teams in this tournament. And they hire the coach who used to coach Messi, oh, wow. and many even argue okay. he's the greatest coach wow. of all time. And domestically, they've been doing fantastic. They're pretty much walking their way to another Premier League title this year without even playing with a true striker. That's like the only weakness of this team. And uh, apparently that's going to be solved because the rumors now is they're going to sign the best young striker in the world not named Mbappe. This kid named Erlen Holland is a fucking freight train. <laughs> if they are able to grab him, they're going to be pretty much unstoppable. It is His rookie card, uh, that the Holland kid, his rookie card is kind of... It's kind of price. Don't ask me how I know that or anything, but it's kind of price. It is inevitable that they will eventually win this competition. So if you have low self-esteem and you just need something in your life to make you feel like a winner, root for Man City, bro. Fuck it. After these last three godforsaken fucking years, if you need something positive in your life, just go and root for Man City, brother. So yeah, that's pretty much who you should be bandwagoning. But now you probably want to know, how do I even watch this competition? All right, so the important date you need to know is that the round of eight goes ahead and kicks off on April 5th. And for people in America, you have two, well, well technically it's three options <laughs> on how to watch this competition. If you want to watch it live, you can go ahead and pay $5 a month for Paramount Plus, which also gives you access to the new Halo series that everyone says is just okay. It's just okay at best. But hey, still cheaper than a single gallon of gas. And if you're a student, you can qualify for 25% off. You broke fuck. Also, if there are any students out there who want to lend me their email, I mean, I'll save 25% off of $5. I was just joking. I'm Asian. I love a good deal. But I want to give you fair warning that uh, because this is in Europe, the time to watch it live is a little bit awkward. It always happens on Tuesdays and Wednesdays at 3 p.m. in the afternoon for the East Coast folks and 12 noon for my West Coast viewers. But what is nice about it, if you can take a lunch break, you can go to a sports bar and watch it. Or if you want to save even more money and time, you can just watch the highlights on YouTube. It's obviously not as good as watching it live, but it cuts out a lot of the bullshits that Americans hate. And honestly, in fact, you should go right now and rewatch the insane two legs between Real Madrid and PSG. Just go T12 noon West Coast. 
So yeah, for all my lazy Americans, nice, low commitment, just like my dating life, if it even existed. But that is pretty much all the info you need oh to get to start watching the Champions League this year. Now, I know I might have disappointed some of my Italian-American friends here, because I didn't mention any of the teams from Italy, but that's not my fault. It's, it's just for whatever reason, the Italian team sucked dick this year in this competition. My condolences. I Bro. know you guys just got bounced from the World Cup as well, but hey! Yo, the language! The language! Holy cow! Y'all won the Euros this past summer, so, you know, can't win them all. Anyway, that is going to be it from me, Be Modest. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. If you did, go ahead, smash the like. Please, please, God, smash the like. It's the only thing keeping me alive with this godforsaken algorithm. Uh, I'll be back in a couple weeks to give you a guide to the NBA playoffs, which is kicking off in April as well. It's a good thing you've got Patreon, homie, because holy cow, with your, with your blue language. It's one thing to take and drop, you know, a cuss word here or there, or, you know, have a video that's outside of the norm dropping a lot of cuss words, but it to be the norm throughout the video, no, yeah, you're going to run into problems with YouTube, demonetization, and even age restricting. That being said, good video. I enjoyed this a lot. I, okay, so... I, I didn't realize how many leagues were involved and how the teams that participated were chill. I didn't, I didn't realize that, but, and the fact that it happens every year, you, you know, you got the world cup and you've got, um, what, uh, the year, the Euro cup or whatever. I, those happen every couple of years, this happening every year. And it taking the top teams from these from the different leagues, like top three or four teams from the different leagues, to make up the the roster of teams for the Champions League, and then the prestige that you get from doing so. We don't have anything like that here in the U.S. at all. Um, I love the fact that number one, this is pre MLS Messi because now Messi playing for a team down in Miami, which is partially owned by David Beckham and. I've got to make a trip to Miami at some point in time this year because I've it's the only way I'll ever be able to take and see Messi, <laughs> like for real. Uh, but we don't have any any kind of comparison, as because even the NFL and stuff like it's just the NFL. The, the playoffs are just the NFL. Like we don't have any football cups like that for American style football. You're not going to take the NFL Arena League football. Canadian, you know, Canadian Football League or anything like that, or and then oh yeah, we're going to put you in a route. Nothing like that's We don't have anything like that. And so this would be, that'd be yeah, that, that's one of the cool things about <laughs> about football over there, is the fact that y'all got all these cool tournaments and stuff. <laughs> it's what well, well, you, well we're world champions, but we're the only league that plays this crap. So. <sighs> Anyways, I, I really enjoyed the video. Um, like I said, maybe, 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 maybe going forward to taking might be some, might be some watch alongs because I do love some football. I do. And I, I enjoy uh, European football and <laughs> Premier League. A little bit more than I have NFL the last couple of years. My friend Joey Edibles of uh, Square Table Degenerates Podcast is always like, "Bro, there's no way it's NFL's better," and it's just, it's just not. It's just, it's just not. Sorry. Um, granted, I, I, I haven't watched a whole, whole lot of the Premier League games past what I've been able to catch of Liverpool and like I've, I caught an Everton game, Everton versus somebody, and they abs I think it was Crystal Palace or something. They absolutely destroyed them. It was like six nothing or something like six. Th it was like six to two, but they'd absolutely destroy them. I was like, "Holy Jesus!" But it was still more exciting than what you get out of a lot of NFL games these days. Just yeah. So we, we definitely going. I'm going to start paying attention to to schedules and stuff that like that going forward. And not only of the Premier League, uh, try to do so for some of the European leagues as well. And We'll try to take and do some watch alongs going forward. Give me about a week or so on it, but yeah. Yeah. So that being said, I hope everybody enjoyed this. Y'all be good to each other. Love yourselves. Peace.